today the fast fish eats the slow fish. I really love this sentence because uh, I think uh, it uh, really represents what's happening today. So companies are uh, running to modernize their application environment and infrastructure environment as well in order to answer to a very demanding uh, market. The bad news is that more than 70% of digital transformation fail. And uh, the reason could be, especially in the SAP world, because more than 45% uh, of application are custom code. So the objective today is to understand how Red Hat can support you and drive your modernization path, combining our open technology and our open organization experience. Welcome to everyone. I'm Piero Giscardazza, MSA's leader for ACM, Application Modernization and Runtimes. So the agenda for today is uh, this one you can see on the screen. Uh, we will uh, have an overview about uh, application modernization and migration. Then we will focus on uh, uh, Red Hat uh, integration technology. And then we will have the drop up session with a Q&A. Let's start with uh, an overview of the AMM initiative. Uh, first of all, I want to give you a big picture of the program. So basically, our Red Hat middleware portfolio is made of three main pillars, application runtime, integration, and process automation. They can uh, run on top of our container platform, OpenShift, and the application organization and migration is uh, also known as AMM, is basically the framework, the umbrella. When we speak about uh, uh, AMM, we can focus on two types of activities. The modernization, uh, for instance, uh, um, doing, uh, making better software architecture, or the migration, moving from an existing technology to Red Hat technology. Uh, the driver are basically the cost saving reasons uh, or as you said, increasing speed, for instance. But uh, this is a journey, and like every journey, we need to start with the right step. And the first step in our approach is the discovery session. Discovery session is a meeting with the key stakeholders and Red Hat experts where we understand together with you and our partners uh, what are your challenges and what are your expectations, uh, what you want to achieve in a short, mid, and long term. This is very useful because uh, this way we can uh, support you during the modernization path. This is an example of an agenda. Uh, nowadays, of course, we can run it uh, uh, in a virtual environment. And as you can see, the main objective is to understand the why of the modernization and what we can change. And it's very crucial to measure the real benefits you can achieve. After the discovery session, we will have uh, several steps. Uh, as you can see, uh, AMM is a step-by-step -step approach. The main reason is to mitigate risks. And uh, after discovery session, we can drive uh, you to a modernization path using the migration approach or the um, modernization approach. And uh, we will run basically a um, um, session called the navigate. Then we will have another step and another step uh, until the delivery of the real project. During these steps, 
we will use our consulting, our partners, and we can also use our Open Innovation Labs. We will not focus on the Open Innovation Labs during this uh, session, but of course I'm available to answer questions if you are interested in. Uh, during the introduction, I mentioned the open culture. That is a bit, actually part of our training as well. And I strongly recommend not to forget the training because people are the key in any modernization journey. Uh, that's why we have some very good training such as DevOps culture and practice enablement where you can taste new techniques, uh, a different approach, an agile uh, approach to run your projects. In a modernization uh, journey, it's uh, very crucial uh, to change the way you run the business. Well, uh, it's everything from the AMM perspective. And uh, let me hand over to Manfred Bortesch-Lager, who will speak about Red Hat integration technologies. All right. Thank you very much, Pierluigi. Uh, my name is Manfred. I am the sales lead for EMEA for Agile Integration, which is a Red Hat's go-to-market message and bundle that, that includes all the various different integration technologies. So Pierluigi, in the first couple of minutes, spoke about our method, application modernization and migration, or short AMM, that we can use to uh, migrate and modernize different um, infrastructures and landscapes. And now I would like to talk about some of the um, core technologies that Reddit offers in the integration space and also beyond. So let's take a look at this. Um, you're probably familiar with this very famous uh, Gartner uh, model. It's called the bimodal IT. Um, it's a model that has been around for, for many many years, but it can it's it's basically timeless and it can still be applied to to many different uh, scenarios today, and it can also be applied to an SAP scenario. So what you can see here uh, at the bottom, the um, gray blocks. These these are existing systems. Uh, lots of them are conventional or traditional SAP systems and services and they're very um, reliable. In many, in many cases, they're also often uh, monolithic and, and maybe not the fastest ones, but they're very reliable and they will not be replaced that quickly or modernized that quickly. And this is what Gartner refers to as the mode one. On top, uh, the smaller red boxes, that's what Gartner refers to as mode two. And these are a lot more agile, fast moving, smaller, innovative uh, modules also often referred to as microservices, but not necessarily microservices, could also be mini services, just everything that's a lot smaller than the, than the existing uh, monoliths. And this, in the top part, in mode two, this is where Red Hat has a lot to offer with our integration technologies, but also with um, our middleware and container platforms and various other things which I'm going to cover in, in a minute. But then what's also very important is actually the layer in between. So here in this, in this chart, it's the, the yellow uh, layer that connects the mode one with the mode two. And this is really the, the glue that combines the, the mode one, so that the more traditional systems and services with the more um, uh, newer and more agile uh, mode two on top. And this is all highly API driven. So basically you need some sort of glue that combines those two modes. And that's also exactly where Red Hat Agile integration can help a lot. And in the context of SAP, can help a lot to extend the SAP ecosystem with uh, other and different third-party services. So let's take a look at this, at how this can look like concretely in, in terms of the SAP, SAP landscape. Um, so SAP offers a, a concept or a solution, uh, what, what they refer to as the intelligent enterprise. And that's composed, so this is a very simplified uh, chart, but I think it helps a lot to understand. So uh, in the core is what SAP calls the digital core. So this is the inner circle. And then around that digital core is the SAP cloud platform. Um, this is an aggregation of various different technologies. Um, some of them are SAP proprietary, some are white labels, some are coming from partners. But it's a, it's a common platform that surrounds the digital core and then opens up all the rich services that SAP can offer to various different stakeholders. So as you can see here on the slide, it can be suppliers on the top left, it can be customers, top right, uh, employees, 
and then all sorts, all sorts of other um, assets. Uh, and then on top of that, uh, you can see this here on, uh, in the top in the middle, this square. Custom applications can be built to access the digital core by leveraging the SFE cloud platform. So this is conceptually uh, the area in which we are um, moving and, and the, the context that we're talking about. Now, what is interesting, um, I modified this picture a little bit, uh, showing the Red Hat parts uh, or the role that Red Hat can play in this, in this context and in this infrastructure. Um, so I, I, I drew a couple of red boxes that can represent Red Hat parts and, and the role that Red Hat can play. So for example, on the top right, Red Hat, with our integration technologies, we can build um, connectors and adapters that allow, for example, customers to access with all sorts of different uh, protocols and technologies, the SAP Cloud Platform. We can also help, for example, uh, on the bottom left, by integrating the SAP Cloud Platform with the digital core. So we can also provide or write uh, adapters and connectors that connect into the digital core. And then also, we have various different uh, runtime technologies and process automation technologies, which I will also cover in a second, where we can help uh, build custom applications that sit on top of the SAP Cloud Platform uh, or any other sorts of custom applications that, wait, that may be required by, by a customer. Um, they can be microservice-based or not, um, and ideally, they are all cloud-native. So how can we achieve this? We are leveraging a concept uh, by SAP that's called uh, the Cloud Side-by-Side -side Extensions concept. And basically what it means is everything you see here on the left is um, the more conventional uh, SAP infrastructure. So we, we, we could refer to this as the mode one. Uh, but then SAP created interfaces and possibilities to connect to the um, mode one by using these so-called side-by-side extensions. So these can be either extensions that are built by SAP themselves or by any third parties or partners. And as you can imagine, um, there can be many of those side-by-side -side extensions. And this is a very powerful concept because it allows to extend the ecosystem of SAP in a, in a fairly straightforward way um, and allow to increase the reach of the whole SAP uh, platform to many different customers, partners, and, and other players. Now, with Red Hat, we are leveraging exactly this side-by-side -side extension concept with our own technology, um, which is what I depicted here in red. Uh, in our case, everything is based on uh, our container platform. It's a very well-known container platform. It's the market leader. Uh, it's called OpenShift. And the main benefit, or I mean, there are many benef benefits of OpenShift, but the, the crucial one is that OpenShift bans many different underlying infrastructures. So these infrastructures could be uh, bare metal. It could be anything uh, on-premise, either virtualized or not virtualized. It can go into a private cloud scenario or it can also go into public cloud scenario. And the beauty of this is that OpenShift is an abstraction layer that covers all of this, and our customers, in an SAP context or not, that, that's independent, they can span and abstract from all of these different infrastructures, which, um, make, which increase a lot of flexibility and also reduces the risk of uh, vendor locking. So OpenShift is our common platform, and then on top we have loads of different technologies and products um, in the, in the middle of our space that can help to build these side-by-side -side extensions, um, whatever these are. So this is then very customer-specific in many cases or partner-specific, um, but it's very flexible to use the, the different set of, of middleware technologies that also Pierluigi outlined at the beginning to, to build these extensions. Okay, for completeness sake, and I will not go into too many details, um, this is an, a high-level overview um, or a architecture of, of OpenShift, of our container platform, uh, which is really the, the underlying platform for pretty much everything we do at Red Hat <clears throat> because of these main benefits that it uh, spans a lot of different infrastructures, public, uh, private cloud, uh, public cloud, uh, on-premise, and so on. Um, and it just gives us a very rich platform to run our workloads on top, which can be applications, or it can also be all sorts of other uh, middleware connectors or integration connectors as I outlined at the beginning. Um, I'll cover this short because um, th there are many, many other resources that go into detail uh, for OpenShift. Um, if you do have any questions about that, we're also happy to, to cover them in the Q&A section at the end of this webinar. 
But then I was talking about uh, this concept of, of uh, integration. Uh, at Reddit, we call this agile integration that can help to extend the SAP uh, landscape and ecosystem. And all of this is API driven. So leveraging the idea of application programming interfaces to connect into various different areas into the SAP landscape. There are four main capabilities that speak for, for agile integration. The first one is enterprise integration patterns. So that's the idea of not constantly reinventing the wheel, but leveraging existing patterns. Because the majority of integration challenges or, or problems are actually very well known. So, so why would you create uh, a new integration for a known problem if there is an existing solution anyway? So there's a rich uh, set of libraries out there. Um, it's called Apache Camel. It's an open source project that we use um, that we productize and then offer to our customer. The second capability is the, the blue bubble, uh, that's event and, and streaming. Um, so we also leverage, uh, especially now, very popular uh, a streaming engine or a streaming project. It's called Kafka. That's also part of our um, product. So that is useful whenever there are loads of messages exchanged and um, a client needs real-time information in a reliable way. That's exactly where uh, our streaming technology comes in. Um, then uh, a third pillar is data, so everything that's related to, uh, to exchanging data. And the fourth one, of course, is APIs and API management. Um, so APIs, on the one hand, are great um, because it offers a lot of flexibility to, to hook in uh, and, and add value in various different areas. But then an API itself is naked, uh, so it's unprotected and, and unmanaged. So we offer for this also an API management solution which makes it 100% uh, uh, secure and controllable. So then you are in a situation where you actually know exactly what is happening with an API, who accesses what API, and what are they doing with it. So it, it adds a lot of um, security, manageability, and, and visibility. Uh, to be a bit more concrete, um, Reddit Agile Integration combines various different uh, capabilities. Um, three skills, the one that covers API management, Fuse is the one that covers all the uh, integration patterns that I mentioned, and Red Hat AMQ is the product or the capability that covers all the events and, and the streaming. So I mentioned this just for completeness sake, but more important than these product names are actually the capabilities that are behind. Then one further interesting aspect is that we also offer uh, an end-to-end -end process management. So you can imagine uh, that processes in a customer environment with or without SAPs can be very complex and they can span many different uh, products and areas. So it could be that, um, that, let's say for example, support tickets are raised in service now, then the finance of a customer is, is covered in NetSuite, uh, customer data is in Salesforce, and documents are in, in open text. So it's a very diverse and rich landscape of different products and, and services that are used. and that. And the process doesn't care. So the process basically spans all these various different uh, locations and applications and services. Now, the beauty is that, coming back to my um, drawing at the beginning, is that we can span with our process um, automation manager the whole end-to-end -end process across the whole landscape. So as I said earlier, um, maybe that an application, a custom application, is written in uh, Node.js, a uh, very fast framework for especially mobile applications, or in Quarkus, which is our uh, latest high-performing runtime. Uh, it could be that uh, ServiceNow is used. It, of course, SAP technology products will be used at some point. And the beauty is that all of these different uh, applications and services can be covered by the Reddit Process Automation Manager uh, across these different uh, locations. So now we have covered um, the various different um, integration technologies. We have covered some of the uh, of the applications that can be built on top, like using uh, runtimes, and we've also covered uh, the process automation manager, which is all covered by the Red Hat uh, middleware. So, um, with that, I would like to briefly wrap up our webinar, and then we can go into some um, Q and A as well. So, the key takeaways from today's webinar is basically that speed is essential in today's market. As Pierluigi said, uh, it's more important to be the fast fish rather than to be the fat fish or the big fish. 
And everybody, regardless of size, is exposed um, to this risk and is, is exposed to extremely high competitiveness. Gianluigi presented our method, the Application Modernization and Migration, or short AMM method for SAP, which is our technology adoption method that can be used to help our customers uh, modernize their, their landscape or migrate into a more modern world. This can be used, so the method is independent. It can be used by, by Reddit itself. So we have our Reddit services organization or consulting organization that can leverage this approach. But we also work a lot with partners to cover this approach together. I introduced the SAP side-by-side -side concept, which is an excellent concept to enrich the SAP landscape uh, and broaden it and also uh, increase the reach of this, of this infrastructure and ecosystem. And then finally, I spoke about uh, the API-based integration um, technologies that can be used to actually leverage this side-by-side -side concept and implement it in a way so that customers or partners can build integrations, um, applications, or process automation uh, concepts on top um, of, uh, of Reddit, uh, middleware infrastructure plus also uh, OpenGPT. Okay. And with that, we would like to conclude this first part of the webinar. So, so we covered um, our uh, presentation. And now we would like to continue and see if there are any questions and cover them in our Q&A. OK, so let's take a look at some of the questions. Um, if you still uh, want to submit some, feel free to do so. Uh, we have this uh, Q&A window uh, on, on the uh, platform. So feel free to post any questions you may want to ask us um, in, in this panel. Um, we have a couple, so let me see what we have. Um, first question, suppose a customer starts the monetization path through a discovery session, uh, as you presented, what would be the next step? I think this one would be a good question for Pierluigi to cover. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Manfred. Uh, yeah, good, good question. Um, as, a, as I mentioned during the, the, the webinar, um, AMM is a step-by-step -step approach. So discovery session actually is uh, the first step, but then we can drive, based on the outcome of the discovery session, uh, the right next step. And it usually is uh, an assessment. We call it a application portfolio assessment, and we understand uh, uh, what are the challenges from the application perspective. So we, we are focusing not anymore on the uh, whole uh, modernization journey. We, we focus on the applications uh, in order to um, analyze them through our tools and uh, understand the potential challenges we have. Uh, we also use uh, some techniques uh, and some initiatives uh, called uh, Navigate uh, together with our experts to define uh, the best architecture for the, for the future. So uh, as I said, it's a step-by-step -step approach. So it really depends on the outcome of the previous step to better drive the next one. I hope uh, I answered uh, the question properly. Okay, thank you very much, Pierluigi. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. Um, what if an SAP customer already has an API management solution or existing uh, integration infrastructure? Does this have to be replaced by uh, Red Hat technology? Um, okay, that's another excellent question and, and something we, we uh, get a lot uh, because obviously most of our customers do already have some, some sort of um, integration technology, integration infrastructure in, in place. Um, a lot of customers also have some sort of uh, API management in place. And um, the good news is that, no, this does not have to be replaced. Um, most of the Red, all of the Red Hat integration technologies are uh, API powered and API driven. So it's fairly straightforward, uh, or at least technically feasible, to uh, mix and match various different uh, components. So it may well be that a customer already has a certain integration technology or product in place that exposes APIs, uh, and these APIs can then be 
uh, secured, managed, uh, and monitored and monetized by using, for example, the Reddit API management solution um, or product, which is called uh, Threescape. So, so that's the good news, um, and that that's also that was one of the main uh, design decisions behind Red Hat Agile integration to have everything uh, modular and in components so that our customers can uh, mix and match um, as they prefer. Okay, um, so yeah, feel free to uh, post further questions if you have any. Um, I'll go to the next one. Through which protocols that SAP provides uh, can someone achieve SAP integration with uh, external applications? Uh, it's a bit of a more technical question, and I would like to hand this over to uh, Gokan to answer, please. Okay, yes, um, thanks for that. Um, uh, a lot of people think that SAP is a closed solution, proprietary, but SAP really actually um, uh, started to improve itself by offering uh, integration solutions for ex external applications uh, rather than inputting data uh, directly or just mic you know, putting data or uh, inserting data in it uh, in via spreadsheets and uh, in older methods. Uh, now SAP offers uh, two capabilities. One of them is for uh, through SAP NetWeaver Gateway, what we call all data protocol. So you can access and you can make uh, certain uh, data structures uh, available uh, as APIs through this protocol, uh, which is extremely useful. Another one, and most importantly, SAP also provides SAP connectivity Java libraries, uh, so you can actually uh, directly call um, SAP BAPI's business APIs, which exist within SAP. Uh, so it makes it extremely easy, for example, to create a service order or sales order from an external application uh, through APIs that you instantiate on Fuse, and preferably, of course, on OpenShift. Um, so that is a, that allows you to create uh, capabilities that you didn't have before, um, and integrate this with external applications and external data. So that's extremely useful. Excellent. Thanks, Gokan. So that's 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 the power of APIs. It just helps us to enrich uh, integrations and, and make the whole integration landscape also with external applications uh, a lot more effective and efficient. Okay, so um, I don't see any, any further questions at the moment, so I suggest uh, we wrap, uh, wrap it up here. Uh, we conclude our webinar. Uh, as a follow-up, we are going to um, share the recording, so feel free to also use that um, and, uh, and, and share it with, with your colleagues or whoever may be interested. Uh, there will also be handouts, um, so you can have the, the slides that we used uh, as PDFs as well. Okay, and with that, I would like to, to thank our speakers of today, and also would like to thank you uh, for attending this webinar.